For those of you who have witnessed both the fifth and the sixth Starship flights, it's clear that the fifth flight stands out as the more successful of the two. It achieved the incredible feat of catching the booster with the Makazilla Tower, marking a major milestone for SpaceX. While the sixth flight also performed well in many aspects, the fact that the booster didn't return to the tower and instead splashed down in the ocean left many feeling slightly disappointed. However, SpaceX has just revealed some exciting news about the upcoming seventh Starship flight, and the details look very promising. If everything goes as planned, Flight 7 could surpass both Flight 5 and Flight 6 in terms of technological advancements and success. We'll dive into all the details in this video. Before we delve any deeper, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. SpaceX's journey to this point has been defined by rapid prototyping and iterative development. Unlike traditional aerospace companies, which often spend years perfecting a single design, SpaceX adopts a test-early, fail-fast approach. The company has built and tested dozens of Starship prototypes, each one incorporating lessons learned from its predecessors. The early prototypes, such as Starhopper and SN1, were used to validate basic concepts like structure and engine performance. These initial versions were rudimentary compared to today's designs, but they laid the foundation for what was to come. The first major leap occurred with the SN5 and SN6 prototypes, which successfully performed short hops. Then came SN8, the first prototype to perform a high-altitude flight. Although SN8 didn't survive its landing, it marked the beginning of SpaceX's focus on fine-tuning the complex landing maneuvers required for a fully reusable spacecraft. Each subsequent prototype, from SN9 to SN15, introduced incremental improvements, ending in SN15's successful landing. SpaceX then transitioned to the orbital flight phase, introducing full-stack configurations where the Starship was paired with the Super Heavy booster. This marked the debut of what SpaceX referred to as Starship Vig-1, a version designed for integrated flight tests. The most notable flight in this series was Flight 5, where the booster was successfully caught by the Mechazilla Tower. Reusability. However, not all flights were flawless. Flight 6, while successful in many respects, saw the booster splash down in the ocean rather than returning to the tower, which some viewed as a step back. This brings us to Starship FIF-2, set to debut in Flight 7. SpaceX has confirmed that Flight 7 will debut the next generation of Starship, unofficially referred to as Starship Phi-2. This new version includes a host of upgrades aimed at making the spacecraft more efficient, resilient, and capable of supporting long-term space exploration. The question now is whether this upgraded version will launch before the end of the year, and if it does, it could set a new benchmark for reusable spacecraft. Starting with the upgrades, Starship V-2 will feature redesigned forward flaps, larger propellant tanks, and a new generation of heat shield tiles. These changes represent a major evolution in the vehicle's design and functionality, even though SpaceX has not explicitly labeled it as V2. The redesigned forward flaps are particularly significant. After the damage observed during Flight 4, SpaceX made them smaller and sharper, with a streamlined joint that connects them to the ship. They've also been repositioned closer to the nose and the leeward side of the ship. These adjustments are intended to improve navigation during flight and reduce stress during re-entry, making the spacecraft more reliable. The vehicle's larger fuel tanks are another critical improvement. Images of Ship 33, the first V-2 prototype, show a repositioned payload door, which strongly indicates increased fuel capacity. This will allow Starship to carry more propellant, enabling it to support orbital refueling operations and extend its operational range for missions beyond Earth's orbit. This is a significant step forward, especially when compared to rockets like the Falcon Heavy or NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, which are not designed for orbital refueling. In contrast, Starship aims to redefine long-duration space missions by making refueling a standard practice. The heat shield has also undergone a major overhaul. 
Beginning with Ship 30, SpaceX introduced new, more durable tiles likely made from advanced materials. These tiles are designed to withstand the intense heat of re-entry while moving closer to full reusability. For a spacecraft of Starship's scale, which requires thousands of tiles per flight, reusability is essential for reducing costs. In addition to these tiles, SpaceX has added secondary protective layers, known as ablative layers, to provide extra durability. These changes put Starship in a league of its own compared to other rockets, such as Blue Origin's new Glenn, which doesn't focus as heavily on heat shield reusability. Ship 33, the prototype for V2, was constructed in just 41 days, and it has already completed cryogenic testing and is currently equipped with Raptor 2 engines. However, for the V2 prototype to achieve its full potential, it will likely need to be equipped with the more powerful Raptor 3 engines. The Raptor 3 engines are critical because the V2's projected liftoff thrust of 8,240 tons cannot be achieved with Raptor 2 engines. By comparison, the SLS produces about 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, and Falcon Heavy produces about 5 million pounds. The V-2's thrust capability places it among the most powerful rockets ever built, emphasizing SpaceX's focus on scalability and innovation. The booster choice for Flight 7 remains uncertain. Two options are currently being considered, Booster 14 and Booster 15. Booster 14 AV-1 version has already completed cryogenic testing and only requires static fire testing to be launch ready. On the other hand, Booster 15, which aligns more closely with V-2's design, is still in development with no visible signs of testing progress. SpaceX's decision will have a direct impact on the Flight 7 timeline. If they opt for Booster 14, there's a good chance the flight could happen by the end of the year. However, if they choose Booster 15, the mission may be delayed until early 2025. When compared to other rockets, the advancements in Starship 5 too stand out. Unlike NASA's SLS, which costs billions per launch and is entirely expendable, Starship is designed for rapid reusability. Similarly, Blue Origin's new Glenn, while promising, has yet to launch, and its focus on commercial satellite payloads makes it less versatile than Starship, which is being developed for missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. According to Musk, the first uncrewed Starship mission to Mars could take place as early as 2026 or 2027, with a crewed mission potentially following in 2028 or 2029. To achieve these ambitious timelines, SpaceX has outlined a clear strategy to scale its operations and ensure the readiness of the Starship system for interplanetary missions. Musk has expressed a vision of launching up to 1,000 Starship missions per year. This high launch cadence is essential for establishing a sustainable human presence on Mars. To support this, SpaceX is expanding its launch infrastructure. At the Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, the company is constructing additional launch towers. If you're interested in Musk's other companies or crazy ideas, I have a great documentary for you. Just search for Elon Musk's worst business idea, Hyperloop, and watch it. It's short, fun, and totally worth your time. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.